What's up everybody, it's Paul C here for WP Tuts and today I just want to revisit a plugin that we took a look at probably around about nine months ago where I give you a basic overview of Dynamic Conditions, a plugin that works great with Elementor and Elementor Pro and opens up a ton of really useful options. Now, if you didn't see that first video, I'd recommend taking a look at that. It goes through the basics, gives you some examples and really just shows you some of the things this plugin can do. However, since we did that video, there's been a lot of really useful updates. So the link to the original video will be in the description below. Go and check that out. Hopefully it'll give you a good idea. But in this video, we're just going to jump in and take a look at just some of the new features and why you really, really need to have this plugin in your toolbox. Now, before I get stuck in, first of all, I just want to apologize for my voice. I'm a little bit sick at the moment. I've got the flu. And as you can probably tell, I'm sounding more like Barry White than I normally would. So please excuse that. Hopefully this won't detract from what I'm going to cover in this plugin video. Okay, so like I say, you can jump over to the repository, download a copy of this, or just grab it through the dashboard of WordPress. Once you've done that and you've installed it, you're going to have a new entry inside Elementor. Now, you don't need to have Elementor Pro to use this plugin. You can still use it in various different ways with just the free version. However, if you want to use it alongside things like templates and all those kinds of good things, you are going to need to have Pro or have a plugin that opens up templating options like Anywhere, Elementor Pro and some of the Jet plugins that are available to you. So with that already covered, let's take a little look at what we have available. So if we take a look at the new section under the Advanced tab, you can see we've got Dynamic Conditions. This is broken down into a couple of simple areas, but don't let that simplicity fool you into thinking it's something that really doesn't have a lot of controls underneath the hood. So first thing we've got is the dynamic tag. In other words, what do we want to use as our condition to check against? And that basically that's what dynamic conditions is all about. You choose a condition, you choose something you want to actually check against. You say how you want to check against it by using the show and hide option. And then you choose the condition. In other words, what are we checking directly against? So it could be something as simple as a field empty. If it is, do something. If it's full, then do something different. Simple as that. However, like I say, there's a lot of complexity that's available. Now, if I open up the dynamic options, we can see some of the things we can use to check against. So we click and open it up. And if I just scroll through, you can see there are a lot of different parameters we can use as our dynamic starting points. You'll also notice that we've got ACF fields in because I'm using advanced custom fields as part of this particular website. And this is part of a tutorial that I'll be showing you how to create a much more complex uh, sort of real estate website that should be coming in the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye out on the channel for that. It's going to give you some really, really cool things what you can do. But with that out of the way, let's take a look at what we've got. You can see we can come in and do things like number of posts, post custom fields, the date a post or the particular post we're looking at was created. We come down and scroll through. We've got things like we can just check against various different things inside archives. We can choose different things directly inside the actual site itself. So we could choose logos, taglines, site titles, short codes, user information. And let's just say, let's take a look at user information as an example. Click to open that up. You can see much the same way as we do with ACF. It drops in the dynamic tag we're going to use, but it doesn't say what tag that actually is. To get access to those extra things, we need to click on this little wrench icon. If I click on there, you can see we've now got the normal field option for settings and the advanced option where we can put the before, after and fallback options. If we choose the field section, you can see inside there now, we can use any of those key areas as our sort of checking against. So display name, the username, the email, website, user meta, and so on. So let's just say, for example, you wanted to do is someone logged in, logged out, where well, you could use the dynamic tags to do something like that. You could also display different kinds of messages. So you could say if a username is X, display this message. If a username is Y, display this message. Same with things like bio, email, website, and so on. So that's just one of the types of triggers that we can use. Let's come down and take a look at some of the other options. We've got request parameters. So if you're passing a parameter from one page to another, which is something that you can do with Elementor Pro, you could check that value and then display or hide content on the website, the page that you're looking at, based upon that value sent over from the parameter. So again, something that's incredibly useful. 
Same goes for things like the current date and time. What if you wanted to create an advert that only ran between normal working hours, between nine and five, where you could use the current date time and then check things against that, and then you could display things based upon that current date and time. Let's take a look. If we click on current date and time, again, we get the same thing again. We can choose the little wrench icon. We can say what date format we want, so we can check against that. We can even put a custom one in there. Time format, we can check against there. And again, we've got the advanced option for fallback options before and after, anything like that. So that's just some of the things that we have for our dynamic tag. The show and hide hasn't changed because it's basically just one of two switches. We can show something or we can hide something. It's however you want to use it. Then we've got the condition. Click and expand that. You can see we've got all the normal things you expect, like is equal to, is not equal to. But we also have things like between. So this is where you could use this with the date or the date and time, and you can check for values between one value and another value, and then they either show something or hide something. Pretty useful. We've also got things like in array. So let's just say, for example, you were using an advanced custom field to work with a gallery and you wanted to pass that over as an array, a string of different values, where well, you can now pull out and take a look inside that array, look for different things that you want to compare, and those comparisons can be text, date, weekday, string to time, months, and so on. So you can take a look inside that array, find something that matches the condition that you insert below, and then you can either show something or hide something. So this is what I'm saying. You can start off with something incredibly simple just by saying, is something empty or is something full? Right the way up to checking through arrays, doing between value dates and so on. Tons and tons of very, very useful features all inside this incredibly powerful but free plugin. Then you've also got options underneath then. Do you want to pass short codes and do you want to use debug mode? So if you want to, you can say pass short codes and that'll output and do what it needs to do with a short code if you're using those as part of this kind of thing. So this is just a really brief overview of some of the new features that have been added into the dynamic conditions. I'd recommend taking a look at the change log just to see some of the things that have been added in. So the things like improving the passing of ACF dates, they've added in, like you say, the between, added conditions for pop-ups, add array conditions, loads and loads of really useful things. So if you are into creating more dynamic websites or you just want to have complete control over every aspect of your site, what you show and what you hide, this is a plugin you really need to take a look at. Now, if you'd like to see me cover this plugin in a lot more detail, let me know in the comment section below. Tell me the kinds of things you'd like to see covered and I'll see what I can put together for you in a future video. Now, we will be using this plugin again in future videos where we take a look at advanced custom fields, pods, jet engine, and all those kinds of things. We'll be creating more dynamic websites because it is such an integral part to creating dynamic websites. It's crazy not to use it. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and smash the bell icon to be notified every time new content is added to the channel. As always, all of the applicable links are in the description below. So check it out from there. And like I say, take it for a spin and let me know what you think of it. Well, as always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.